Is it started now? Yes, it started. Hello, and welcome to At His Pace. Here we go. First of all, we would like to give a shout out yes. to our shirts or to the person who's responsible, the people who are responsible for us getting these sh shirts. Shout out to 84 Braves, Von Zay Gray and his wife had these shirts on a while back and we were just so attracted to them that we copied. So thank you to the Grays for giving us some ideas about having some good gear. But eracism is really kind of what we're talking about today. Yes. We're talking about cultural sensitivity and how it impacts relationships. So really cultural sensitivity is honestly simply just being able to understand that there are people that are different in the world. Your culture, your race, your ethnicity is not the only standard and that other people in your life live, breathe, do marriage, have children as equal share in this world and that there is room at the table for everyone. So that's really what I wanted to talk about today in regard to being sensitive to the differences in this world. I think that much of what we're experiencing is because we are insisting that our way is the only way and black people or all black people are this way and all white people are this way. And it's just not the, the case. And I think because of the way we were raised, sometimes that impacts how we interact with other cultures. And I think a lot of it is based upon your experiences, depending on how you were raised. Uh, we were raised, well, I was raised uh, all black neighborhood. I went to a mixed high school and then I really stepped in it when I went to college. I went to uh, PWI or I went to Iowa State and uh, which there weren't many of us. And so I really learned how to fit in and how to do life uh, in that environment. I think it's a huge challenge because sometimes you may lose part of yourself in trying to navigate, assimilate in that environment. And so it, it can be very challenging. But then I think when you get married, uh, we're different. And so how we navigate this world now and how we teach our child how to navigate it uh, is critical. I think it's important to stay true to who you are. Uh, sometimes we forget, you know, I'm a Christian first, I'm God's child first, and then I'm black, you know, so I'm a Christian who happens to be black. And so I think it's difficult to separate the two sometimes because I always feel like I have to carry the banner. And I was raised with similar, similar values, even though my plight is a little bit different. Mark and I went to the same high school, but then I went to an HBCU. So I went to an all black college, pretty much or predominantly black college. And then I got to grad school where I was the only black student in my class of 32. And it was a really big culture shock for me. And I think that I learned how to play the game, if you will, but it was a struggle for me because I think I had had all of these other history and experiences that you said, I didn't know how to do that. I didn't know how to fit in and still be who I needed to be and all of that kind of stuff because I learned that at an older age or my experience was at a much older age. And that was honestly one of the reasons why we were okay with moving to a neighborhood where we knew that we would be minorities because we wanted our daughter to have a different experience and to learn how to, and I hate the word assimilate because that's seen in some ways that feels, that seems like you're giving up something that you are giving up who you are. But I think ultimately we all have to, in some ways to get along, we have to bend a little bit. Doesn't mean that I have to change who I feel, but I have to be open to accept that there are some different ways to do things. And then we tried to move to this, we thought we were moving to a, a predominantly white neighborhood, which I guess still true, but we actually live in a rainbow coalition, which is wonderful. We love our cul-de-sac, shout out to the North Court Court Okay, go ahead. Yes, and I, and I think it it really comes down to it just being the best person that you can be. I think my parents raised me to be the best Mark, and so 
What that means is I learn how to communicate no matter what the environment. I know how to represent myself in any environment. And when I do that, be it how the world may see me, I have to feel comfortable within myself that I am fine with how I present myself and how I carry myself. And how people view me, that's on them. And so in order to do what this shirt says means that I have to be my best self and I have to see people as God will see them. And I know that's probably the spiritual answer, but for me, I have to just do one at a time and we'll go from there. And I think you have to be vulnerable enough to put yourself in situations where you can learn about different cultures, learn about different foods, learn about different ethnicities and still be okay with yourself, still be confident enough in who you are to know that just because I'm learning about somebody else's culture or just because I'm doing this this way does not change who I am, but it helps me to appreciate other people and how they live because we are not all the same. We are not monochromatic people. Yeah, what she said. It's all about exposure. Yeah, so we just hope that this helps you maybe with trying to be more culturally sensitive, moving to a place of cultural proficiency where we're always ever evolving, always trying to be different. And we have much work to do. We grew up in an era where we we said some things that were, and I still have some bad habits. We said some things that were not okay and are still aren't okay, but that was the way we were raised and that was the way we did it. So I'm still working. I'm a work in progress. I'm working on my cultural proficiency. And we are working on being the same people in our relationship. We are that we're is working pace. right. We're working on eracism even in our relationship. Yes. At his pace. Be, be well, well. Be, be blessed. blessed. <laughs>